All right, what's going on, Dark and Darker Dungeon Delvers? Welcome to our comprehensive new player guide. We're going to be starting off today by showcasing four friendly starting classes and their power in PvE and PvP. After that, we're going to be going over questing, the shared stash tab, how to get down to different maps, extract alive with hopefully 500 gold or more per map, depending, and how to solo the four of six easier bosses inside the dungeons. Strap in, here we go. First and foremost, you're gonna choose a class you like, and then you're gonna use the squire to equip them with base gear. This will be reapplied to your character every time you're dead, and it's fun to move things around and see what you like. Then we're gonna use the quest log at the bottom right to grab all of the quests. And if you already have characters, you can actually put quest items in the shared stash tab and then complete quests from there. So this character's never been in the dungeon, but we already have a couple quests done. That's gonna allow us to start with a little bit of gold, buy some potions and what have you. Although to be fair, most of these starter classes won't really need very much potions or gold. Primarily the Druid, Warlock, and Cleric, three of my four friendly starting classes will all be able to heal themselves as shown here. The Warlock especially, um, I often go in with no potions at all because of its power to heal, even without any gear. And I think here we have zero magical healing, which will increase how much health you get back from curses. Just by cursing two targets, even once each, we can get back to full health relatively easily. The more monsters or players that you curse, especially with the differing curses, the faster you'll get your health back. The Druid is fun because it has a lot of movement options and the ability to transition around the dungeon without having to worry too much about finding levers or ease of access, and it has a lot of self-heals and fun little ways to play the game and fight PvE like the thorn wall or something ahead and then tangling vines to root. Just an all around great PvE class, plus it automatically heals over time with the nature's touch perk that you will start with at level one. So here, anytime you take damage, all you have to do is wait and you will get back to full health. His healing abilities also come back very quickly while sitting or at a campfire and they have a multitude of charges so I highly recommend Druid as a friendly starting class as well. The third self-sustaining class that I recommend for new players is the Cleric. Sanctuary will heal yourself as well as damage enemies, and its Q ability Purify Undead will absolutely destroy entire rooms. So it is actually a really great class for leveling and gearing up, and to put things in the shared, uh, shared sash, excuse me, for your other classes because of its PvE clearing potential and the ability for it to destroy most bosses alone. Holy Purification is so powerful. All you have to do is wait for it to come off cooldown if you want to before pulling an entire another room. Next up, we have the Barbarian, who's also pretty good at self-sustain because Potion Chugger gives him more health quicker from healing potions than any other class and crush lets you get geared very 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 easily just grab whatever you can early equip it all and you're just trying to out gear the other players in the match treat barbarian more like a battle royale class because it's it's good from the get-go it doesn't actually need anything to operate and its savage roar is super useful in pvp for making the enemies do less damage and for PvE, as seen here, just for fearing the monsters. It moves around the dungeon extremely quickly due to Crush. And so I highly suggest this as a fun starting class for new players. Learn how to fight the monsters and the dungeon in one fell swoop. And it's a bit more of an aggressive class when it comes to PvP because it doesn't need to self buff or curse or do some sort of strange strategy to win. All it does is W key and left click. So get comfortable and find a class you like and each time you escape the dungeon alive, try to turn in items for your quests and then sell all of the collectibles that you can and stack up a little bit of bank to buy your first stash tab 
to make room for more gear and just to be more comfortable, organize yourself a little bit, and just get used to playing the game. Don't worry so much about buying any gear, just keep putting whatever you can't use into your stash or sell it to the vendor, and then go again into the dungeon with one of these great starting classes as you learn to PvE and PvP. Alright, so you've learned how to PvE, now you want to escape the map alive. For the Goblin Cave, you have an absolute ton of exits. This elevator here in Cave Pit Hall at the middle of the map comes throughout the map and will leave for the final time at the one minute mark. So you must be standing here at about one minute left in the map and then you will get to extract an unlimited amount of people can take this. And then we'll go find another static to show you. So also right here next to Cave Pit Hall just west is a static extract with stairs. This is a similar mechanic across most of the maps, but it will only open after a set period of time has passed. So this one you can just run right through and you will leave. All right, so in addition to the static extracts, you also have these ropes which will come down throughout the match. And then you just grab a hold of that. You can be knocked off of it though, so be very careful in PvP and PvP for something to knock you off. And then you can also just let go with F. It also gets rid of the extract if you want to try to harm the other players by getting rid of a bunch of the extracts. And then going to camp a static, it might force them to move towards you for PvP purposes. Now we'll go find the static portals, which are also on this map. And it's like this on other maps as well. Upon the ground is a blue runestone, and that will summon all of these portals. So that's how we leave Goblin Cave. A multitude of options. I decided to uh, hang out in Ice Caverns and Frost Mountain map cluster, and you want to escape alive. Here there are plenty of static extracts, just like Goblin and crypts and then you also have two modules with this boat and it shows on the mini map the boat as well as in blue the route it will take to take you to extract so you just stay on the boat the whole time and this comes throughout the match consistently and also at the end of the match besides the boat extract you also have this elevator that can fit an unlimited number of people but the elevator can only be taken once and opens on this subfloor and the floor above it close to the end of the match. It's also guarded by a yeti and a bunch of kobolds, so it's kind of a nightmare to get from the bottom floor. And then there's also the static extracts and the static delve down into the abyss. After you've gone down to the ice abyss, you're going to take a rope extract or a portal extract similar to goblin. Meanwhile, Crips has static extracts and delves throughout that you'll see on the minimap, but once you get to Inferno, a trio of portals will spawn in the northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast corners that will give you portals to get out, and it is only here, and they are always here, as seen here in this video. Alright, good luck escaping. It is time to learn how to PvP for spacing and how to boss. All right, it's been 25 hours of PvEing. You're finally ready for your first PvP kill. Everybody has been stomping on you. The important thing to learn about PvP in this game is that spacing and your class strengths are always going to help you win a fight. So with Warlock, we want to be at close to mid-range for curses, consistently peeling back to chip away at their health pool while constantly getting ourselves back to full health. So it's all about landing the curses getting a bolt of darkness off here or there. Phantomize will save you more often than not. Just make sure you have your weapon or book put away so you get that full 10% movement speed buff from it. Here we never actually need to use Phantomize, but it was always an option. While your enemies are cursed, if you Phantomize, you will still gain back all of your health. Gonna go for a long sword hit, we miss, so just peel back again, right? That would've been a free little hit, but we don't really wanna trade in melee with most classes unless we know they're weak. So we get another curse off, he's second winded, he's probably going to be back at full. Nice bolt of darkness hit. He's probably getting low here. Keep to that mid range, right? Don't let it really go to melee. Get another bolt here, another curse. Now he's low, let's get comfortable, let's get into it.
Now, the Druid is bound to get nerfed, but for now, use all of your tools. Use the Fury of Nature to destroy your opponents. It is very easy to trap people with Druid in a lot of interesting ways, especially with Treant, your Thornwall, and Entangling Roots mixed with your Spear. Spear is going to be your best friend on Druid. It's pretty free. Your Barbarian is going to be a menace on the map. This thing is a spawn rushing machine because it breaks through doors and it wins almost any engagement if you catch them off guard. Use Rage as a movement speed ability to catch the, the weaker classes and use your Savage Roar to lower their melee damage. Even against a wizard it's smart in case they have quarterstaff mastery but you'll one tap a lot of classes with a headshot. This thing hits for over 100 pretty much in base gear. It's a lot tougher to win with a Cleric, but if you self-buff with your Divine Shrike and Bless, if you have Holy Shrikes, you would use that in mid-range, and then you just want to press the melee. Obviously, Smite or Judgment here would go hard as well, but catching someone off guard, no matter what class you are, you should almost always be able to win. Everyone is dealing plenty of damage, and the time to kill in the game is pretty fast. So enjoy all the free loots. Now is the best time to learn, as there are tens of thousands of new players besides you, Learning how to PvP. Alright, so you've learned how to PvE and how to PvP, and now you're ready for the next adventure, which is learning how to boss. Bossing is also all about spacing, as well as understanding the phases of the bosses and the whys for bossing. Bossing is worth the most money in the game, outside of high tier player kills and high roller. Even in normals, getting a Trolls Blood and a Troll Pell, we just made something like 2,000 gold in the current economy, and it'll probably go up over the course of the wipe. Plus it gives us access to rooms which typically have treasure piles with 5 to 10 treasure pools where we can get legendary items, gold coin chests worth tens of thousands of gold, legendary capes, rare jewelry, and more. These are also places where you typically find a lot of PvP, so let's go over how to kill each boss in the game with a variety of classes. To keep this simple and fast, I'm just going to showcase each phase and potential of the boss. So for Troll, you want to take off your gear for fast move speed to get to him quick as sometimes he screams right away. The key to Troll is understanding that he doesn't really have phases. He basically just has one specific set of things that he does. He will attack four times in which you can weave in and out and get one or two hits each. And then he will do an overhand attack. Then you go back toward him and always stay within mid-range so he doesn't scream at you. And if he screams, just go to his side. And you'll just repeat this over and over. Weaving in and out every one of his attacks to get in one or two of your own. And then he'll do an overhand where you back away. And then you'll get close so he doesn't scream on you. Next up, we have the Lich. The Lich also only has one phase in normals, pretty much. He will summon adds. And then he will shoot bolts at you, which you just strafe to dodge. And if you get too close, he will do an area of effect attack, which knocks you back. He will also summon a shadow orb that tracks you. You can run that into a wall or a monster or something like a treant or a hydra, as seen here. We'll just run this into monsters. And then he will cast, at intervals of his health, a blue or purple aura on you. Purple will do 95% of your health and damage, but you can share it with party members. Blue does much less damage, but if you try to share it with party members, it will increase how much you each take. So purple come together, and blue, stay away. Rinse, and repeat, and you'll get him. Thirdly, we have the Cyclops, again a phase-based boss. He will do an overhand attack with his club, which you can step sideways on. He'll try to attack you with his hand, which you just jump backward for. He'll do a sweeping club attack from left to right or right to left, which you can jump over. This combo attack is jump, jump, dodge, and the stomp, you have to get away from him. The stomp is really dangerous, that typically one-shots. 
Then he'll go into rockfall phase. Here you have to damage him enough to get him to stop dropping rocks. Just make sure you're jumping after the club hits the ground, typically. The first one's a little bit slower, so you want to jump about half to one second after the club hits the ground, and then pretty quick each time after that. This is just a successive series of, of uh, dodging his attacks. He's mechanically a little bit harder to learn, but a really fun boss because you're active the whole fight. Always moving, jumping, ducking, dodging, and diving. And he can do big damage as well as blind. So just be careful, this is one of the hardest bosses to learn. But again, very, very re rewarding. And when you kill both the troll and the cyclops, you get access to a treasure vault in the middle of the goblin caves on the bottom, where you can get gold ore and another treasure pile, as well as static loose loot, boosted drops. But a lot of times you'll also find heavy PVP in this area with players who know what they're doing and who are also actively trying to boss and access this treasure vault. Be warned, you must know how to PVP here. All right, fam, welcome to Ghost King on normals. This is on Crypt Solos. So I'll be fighting a GK in a 1v1. GK is arguably the easiest boss in Crypts, possibly in the game, depending on how you feel about Troll and Cyclops. Um, Ghost King only really has four moves. So he has a jump where he'll disappear and then reappear on one of his targets. As long as you're uh, moving sideways or forward, you won't get hit by that. And then he has Eldritch Blast, which is like a five dark bolt. And if you jump before he sends those and then ducks, you won't take any damage, neither will your group. If someone is hit by a dark bolt, a stack will appear on the ground. Whenever he jumps, a stack will also appear on the ground. So you have to be careful of these puddles. When you're standing in these like puddles, they give you stacks. And when he screams, you take damage based on how many stacks you have. So you get stacks for getting hit, you get stacks for standing in puddles, and he will also scream every 20% of his health loss. So 80, 60, 40, 20, at least in the high roller variant. And then usually halfway through the fight, maybe twice, depending on your DPS, he will go up into the air and be immune to damage and he'll summon bats and then he'll slam onto the ground. That's kind of a raid wipe mechanic. You have to jump before he slams on the ground. So that's basically like all the phases. Let's just actually show it in motion because it's much easier to just showcase as we're doing it. So here comes Eldritch Blast. I'll jump and then duck, take no damage. Yeah, you know, we can jump, try to get some headshots in. He's just gonna jump, dodge. Try to stack the puddles like near the middle because when he goes into his soldiering phase, that's his other move set. He'll be immune to damage and then he'll chase you. And if he kisses somebody with a soul drink, he does about 95% of their health and true damage. So you can heal through it. If you're at full health, you can actually be soul drank and it's fine. Here comes the first thing. You can't hurt him right here. Just heal. Just heal. You could probably bandage. See, even with two weapons out, I'm still getting away. Here's soul drink. In normals, it's pretty slow. So like you don't have to take gear off. Um, a lot of times in HR, you don't have to take gear off either. But if you're like a plate fighter, you can either use sprints or like take your chest piece off or something. Dark bolt again, jump, and then duck. Get some headshots. Now just bandage. All right, so this is mid. You know, summon the bats, go up in the air, just jump. You can also use a wall to not take damage, like a wall or a torch or something. Just pull him out of there a little bit. That is the King of Ghosts. Which you really want. Oh, nice legendary for normals, especially. And now you have a lot of the tools that you're going to need. So please comment, subscribe, and like if you enjoyed this video or it helped you at all. Let me know down in the comment section if you want to see anything else made, and I'll see you for the next one.